the number one most important thing we can do for the community is provide exceptional customer service. The first workshop I ever went to um, was like some horrible Bakers Association conference, you know, in um, a huge conference in Chicago and it's super air conditioned and you're always freezing, it's awful. But I went to a little work, I didn't got nothing, nothing out of it. But I went, um, you know, I was trying to sell you this horrible food that isn't even food, it's really bad. But, um, but I went to a workshop, it was great, it was called Human Marketing. This guy had this revolution, and we hadn't opened the business yet, he had this revolutionary idea, he was from Toronto. He's like, best kind of marketing is treat all your customers really, really well. We're like, yeah. He's like, no, I mean, really well and he gives an example of his store in Chicago it was a high-end clothing store and he's like you know people say please don't bring your children in here or don't let your children <laughs> touch the clothes and he like he had a playscape he had a cafe people could sit and eat he's like bring it on I want to be everything to you I want to treat you like gold and so he encouraged us you know things like he's like you know those signs where they say we only give change to paying customers he's like why like it costs you anything to give four quarters for a dollar, it's just good service. Or, you know, we only allow our, um, you know, only paid customers can use our bathroom. Really? Water's that expensive? Like we have a lot of homeless people in our neighborhood. Our bathroom is open. I mean, you know, sometimes you gotta be clear with people about what's okay and what's not okay, but frankly, most of the time, it's really not a problem, but mostly it's just good service to your community. I also, frankly, don't ask, I mean, we're small items at the bakery, you know, the average sales maybe $10, so I don't even ask for ID when people, um, <laughs> when people use a, um, would, would write a check. Because frankly, what's it gonna do to see their ID? I mean, if it's gonna bounce, it's gonna bounce, you know? And then you just have to go through the process. And in the first 10 years when people used to actually write checks, we had maybe 10 checks that ever bounced. So one of my um, heroes, and also our competitor is Zingerman's, which everyone knows, and they teach an exceptional course on customer service. Has anyone ever taken it? Yeah, it is. If you haven't, I highly recommend it. And if you have, you know what I'm talking about. And they taught a model that is so great that I'm gonna quickly call it out here. So their steps to customer service are great, but their steps to how to handle a customer complaint is the number one most important thing I've learned in 15 years of doing business. So you're gonna have to forgive me for a minute as I call it out. So, because I think it's an important part of building community. So first step is acknowledge the complaint. A customer comes up to you, there weren't enough chocolate chip cookies in my cookie. Okay, you could think that's really trivial, right? But if they didn't take their chocolate chip cookie seriously, my kids aren't going to college. So I better take their complaint seriously because they really care about how good chocolate chip cookies are. That's why they come to Avalon. So you meet them in the eye, you meet their level of passion. If they're really excited, you don't try to talk them down. You get, you get excited, you go, yeah, that's not okay, that's not okay. And if they're mellow, then you go chill. You make sure you understand what is their complaint. Sometimes it's even not even what they started with, it's something else, but you keep on working with them till you make sure, yeah, you got it, and you know when you got it. And then you look them in the eye and you sincerely apologize. You know, patronizing, like, I'm so sorry that happened, like my 11-year-old. Um, you know, like, I am really, really sorry that happened. That is not okay. And then you see what you do, anything you make it right and by anything I mean any person in the business can do anything to make it right no matter how big or small Paul uh, Saginaw from Zingerman's gave the example of they will drive a pickle to Toledo if someone calls and says I got to Toledo with my sandwich and there was no pickle and I want my pickle they'll be like okay where are you so you give everyone the opportunity to do whatever you can to make it right and here's the number one most important thing 15 years of business drum roll please you thank the customer for bringing it to your attention. And that sometimes seems so hard because it seems so annoying that customers would complain to us. But really, who's annoying is the customers that go away and never tell us what we did wrong. And then talk bad about us and maybe even our moms and stuff like that. <laughs> so the customers who care enough to go face to face with us and say, you know what, you let me down. Those are our valuable customers, and those are the people you want to encourage them. Give me, here's my email address. You tell me any time it's not right. So, right relationship with the community really begins and ends with customer service. 
right relationship with the employees. A lot of people have talked about it today that I've heard and frankly I think might be doing a little better job than I'm doing. We call this spiritual boot camp. It really is a work in progress and I think it's the hardest part of doing a business. In fact, someone once asked me, is management the hardest part of a business? And I said, no, it's the only hard part of a business. Everything else is more or less of a science, but wow, human management is really more of an art form. So of course we're aspiring for good wages, you know, living wage is our goal, you know, we've always provided health insurance, um, paid time off, all that, but then there's some more, other more subtle things like room to grow. So we don't bring in managers from the outside. We take hourly workers that we think are really good and we try to mentor them to become managers and that comes with it its own set of contradictions, but these people, our managers, understand our business and understand their job better than anyone else, and their employees see them working really hard alongside them. The other really cool thing about this is that we have a much more diverse workforce, and even more importantly, a much more diverse management force than most other businesses in our community. Because we're looking at a range of experience. We're not just looking at co what college you went to, or what management job you had, or what track you're on. We're looking at how do you work? How do you, how do you talk to people? And then we work and we mentor with people to bring them to the next level. We're present enough to set an example, but we get out of their hair a lot too, which I think is really important because Avalon's a really fun place to work in large part because employees make it fun. I mean, we're not always the most fun people in the world, you know, and, but they are. So they've really, I think, make Avalon what it is. Um, but the, the hard things that I think I've learned that I'm still really working on is Marketing's been a lot of what I've focused on, and what I've learned after 15 years is really the most important marketing is the marketing we do to our employees. We really can't get our message out there if our employees aren't really remembering our vision, aren't really living our values, and don't really know what's going on day to day. And consistency and professionalism. We didn't have a human resource manual for 10 years. We just started one two years ago, and it's great because we got everyone's buy-in. But it is really important, of course, to have policies mostly for the best employees because they deserve to be treated fairly and not have all the attention going to the very few people who might not be doing their job. So vision, values, and evaluation. So we've got our plot, we've got our characters, but we don't have any pros. And I like to say without Anne, Avalon would be a great idea and we would have never baked a single loaf of bread. So Anne is the practical one. She's where the rubber hits the road. She makes sure things happen. She figured out how to actually bake bread every day on time. 